fluffy mascara. Well, that's Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I haven't been doing too much buying since um, some of my big hauls recently, but I had just kind of clicked onto Sephora for just a moment and something popped up that I actually wasn't going to get. Because it was pricey, it was a little kitschy, a little gimmicky, they do do it every year and I always think that they just kind of miss the mark as far as the timing of it. I'm talking about Lancome and they do some special palettes and this palette they came out with is a heart palette. It is the Monsieur Big 12 Shades of Love palette. Now one would think this would be a wonderful Valentine's Day release because it's a heart, I was going to say a harp. <laughs> where I got that from, I don't know. But they did this last year too. I think they came out with the hard palette as well. And I didn't get that one either. But this was on sale. This was originally a $49 palette and they had it on sale for $35. Essentially, that's about 30% off. And that kind of inspired me to go in ahead and try it. I used to use Lancome shadows a lot, many, many moons ago. I haven't really tried them in quite some time. The palette is absolutely adorable. It is pink, it's metallic, very reflective, smooth packaging. It has the Lancome logo on here, which is hard to see because of the reflectiveness of the palette. A little bit cumbersome because it feels like it's gonna slip out of your hands when you go to open it. It does come with a very nice mirror. I'll try to do this, but I don't wanna blind you. It does have the re um, protective coating on it. Sorry about that. I do have to actually peel the protective coating off the mirror, but even with the film, it's still a very nice mirror. You are getting, as I said, the 12 shadows, and they are divided up into quads. So they have a Big Crush, Big Date, and down here is called Big Night. I'm going to swatch them in those quads so you can see if it's going to be actually usable as a quad. The palette as a whole does have 9.6 grams of product in it, which when you divide it out over the 12 shades, because they are equally sized, it equals 0.8 grams of product, which is much lower, of course, than, say, other shadows. I'll compare it to the ABH, which does vary as well, but it is, you usually get at least a gram. I don't mind having less product. I do mind when they charge more price for it, but I feel that having 0.8 grams is a decent amount of shadow because unless it's your only palette, you're not going to go through it. This is a limited edition palette. It was curated by makeup artist Lisa Eldridge. Now, according to them, it says these 12 limited edition, highly pigmented shades are formulated for long wear and crease resistant technology. The powder formula featuring mattes and metallics is designed to ensure that your eyes stay looking vibrant and fresh from day to night. They're saying that this is a highlight, the base, the corner, and the liner, which is making me think us because I just looked at all of the others that they're telling you where you can use them I don't know if I would necessarily use this metallic as a liner because I really don't know how that would look but so they don't have shade names but that's what this is from the big date quad we have the highlight the base the corner and the liner in this one the only matte really is this pinky shade which they call the base for the big night they have the highlighter which is questionable to me the base, the corner, and the liner. To me, they all seem to swatch quite well. They did not feel powdery. They feel very soft. They seem very, very pigmented. Swatches do not always give a good indication. I won't know till I get them on my eyes. I am going to try to do three looks with this palette using each of these quads and see how reasonable that is according to what they're suggesting. The first section I'm going to be doing is from the Big Crush side. I'm going to go as they suggest and let's see how workable this really is. So first I'm going to take the base color on a fluffy Luxie brush. Don't ask me to read the names without my glasses. just one dip with my brush into that base shade. It's a very, very pretty neutral shade, at least I think for someone with my skin tone. I'm going to do as they suggest and go into the corner shade, which is a little bit of a peachy brown. Thank you. 
I actually took this onto the corner and then without adding any more color, I blended it over into my crease and it gives a nice wash of color. There's no patchiness and it's kind of pigmented, but it does sheer out. I think if you packed it on, it would have more of an impact, which I'm gonna try to do. I have a much denser, flat e.l.f. brush and I'm gonna pick up that corner shade again and I'm just gonna pack it. So as you can see, without blending it, it gives much more of an impact. For the highlight shade, I'm going to use my Sigma E48, which is technically a crease brush, but it is very flimsy, and I find that it does work well on the brow bone. A lot has picked up, so I'm tapping off. And indeed, that is a very pretty highlight shade. The one that I just don't get, which is the liner shade, I'm going to dip in with, I think this is a Farrah brush that I have, and I'm going to attempt to line my eyes. I'm going to take my Cat Lady brush because I do want to add a little bit more of what they call the base on my lid here because there is a little bit of a line of demarcation. I'm going to wet my brush to see if I can actually get a good line. This is a pencil. <laughs> that was a little bit too much water, but this is a pencil brush. I'm also going to take the corner, corner color and run it on. I can't speak. I'm going to take <laughs> the corner color. There we go and run it underneath my eyes. And using that same brush, I'm gonna take the highlight color and add it to my inner corner. So that is what they're saying is a complete look. In my personal opinion, I think this is pretty. Here's what the liner looks like. It definitely stands out. If you wanted a nice subtle look, you could throw on mascara and call it a day. And I do think it's very, very pretty. I have no problem with the way the eyeshadows have performed. I personally would add either brown liner and mascara, or I might, you know, I, you never know, I might just do mascara. So for a pretty look. On this eye, I'm going to try the second quad, which is going to be the big dare side, which is over here. Again, I'm going to follow their suggested steps. I'm using an angled brush from a Vintage Cosmetics using their base color, which is a shimmer. I'm gonna try a different brush because that's going on so-so in my opinion. Using an SL Miss Glam brush. To me, it looks a lot more intense of a sparkle in the pan as it is going on my eye. I'm going to try one more flat shader brush and then I'm actually going to wet it using another Luxie. I think that's all I'm going to get out of it dry. Now, it is very pretty. If Again, if you're looking for a light wash of color, it went on nicely. It is not patchy. I like a little bit more of an impact and it did build up the more times I put it on. I would say that a flat shader brush like this is your best option to apply that color. That is it wet. I think it definitely has much more of an impact wet. Using a Juvia's Place brush that is slightly angled, I'm going to go into the color they suggest for the corner, which is most definitely a shimmer shade.
Now this shade I did not bring fully into my crease, but I did bring it up higher and blow it out slightly. And it's not an overly shimmery shade that's going to be too over the top if you do want to bring it into your crease. This is just what I chose to do for something different and I think it blends beautifully and it's a beautiful rosy color and I like it. I'm also going to take that shade and run that underneath my lower lash line. Again, subtle but pretty, adds a little extra something to it. For this liner shade, I'm going to use a bit more of a traditional eyeliner brush, and this is my one from Ipsy and Tetris. Now to me this time, I don't think this color was truly an impactful liner. It did add a little bit of dimension to the eyelid, but unlike this one, where it's definitely, you can see that it is something there. This one is dark, and so I'm going to be zooming in, of course. So you can see that it kind of is just a little wash of a darker color. This one I would definitely put an eyeliner on because it's a little bit more smoky, and I think it needs something else. So without adding anything else, because it would be difficult for me to do, these are the two looks so far. This is your big crush side. This is the big date side. I didn't add the highlighter. Let me do that. This is a pure white highlighter. This one is stunning. I'm also going to add that to my inner corner. This is gorgeous. I absolutely love that. So this is the big crush side. This is the big date side so far. Again, I think if I wanted to make it more impactful, adding some liner and some mascara, which I would do anyway, as far as the mascara goes. I think it, they're both beautiful. I think this is so far a very user-friendly palette. I'm going to go off camera take this off and we're going to do the final on both eyes, the big night. And that one, I'm going to add the liner and the mascara and everything to go with it. So we can see what a nice dramatic look would be. Okay. I am back for the third and final look. This time I tapped a little bit of my Ulta primer on my eyes because I want to see if that has anything to do with the impact of the shadows. So for the date night, the base is much more intense and it is a matte. That was with one dip of my brush into the shadow and I have applied it all over my lid and blown it out slightly for a little bit more drama. I mean that, although it shears out, it doesn't shear out in a bad way. I think it's a beautiful lid color and base color and I really like it. Using my vintage cosmetics brush, I'm going to go into the corner, which is a chocolate brown matte color as well. That was another one dip. It blends out beautifully. It's not harsh. It's just a nice deep color. I'm going to take a little bit of my base color and I'm going to run that underneath my lower lash line. Now this one for the highlight, I, I just don't understand it. I am going to do it and I'm going to also use it for my inner corner. We'll see what happens. It's just, it's a very bright pink. Now on a deeper skin tone, I think this will be a gorgeous highlight. Yeah, see, I'm not understanding that <laughs> to be honest. even blend it out, it's just too intense. Instead of that color that is just not going to work for me, I am going to go into this highlight from the Crush palette 
and I'm going to put that on my brow bone. Now because I had that darker color, it's not as impactful, so I'm going to go into the highlight from The Big Date. Again, it's a little bit much. I think it's very dark for my brow bone. And if I was going somewhere, I would probably wipe that part off and just t touch it up. But that's the only shade that I think didn't work appropriately, aside from like the liners. I am going to put that color, the highlight from the big date on my inner corner, which I really think is just a spectacular color. I would say this is more impactful, maybe on my lid. Let me try. It is definitely stunning as a lid color, that is for sure, for me. Let's go into the liner. Because this is so deep, I mean, it may work as a liner. And this is the only liner color that's an actual matte that they have for liner color. So honestly, this is not, especially for this deep of a look, this is not impactful, at least for me, as a liner. For some people it may, but I want to go on and put on a black liner and some nice fluffy mascara. Fluffy mascara? Well, that's the look I'm hoping to get out of it anyway. But again, I would use this as a crease color to really deepen everything up. You can create a very dramatic look with this, but use one of the other highlighter colors. So let me go do that and I will be right back to show you the final look and then give you my final thoughts on this palette and whether or not it's worth it being on sale and me getting it. Okay, my friends, so I am back. Yes, I did put my hair up because it was annoying the absolute bejeebies out of me, but it's still the same day and everything. So I finished off the look. I went a bit dramatic with my eyeliner. Secret, that's only because I slipped. Just letting you in on that. Luckily, I, I like it. So here are my final thoughts on this first impression of this Lancome palette. Was it worth me getting because it was on sale? For first impressions, I absolutely think so. I think it's a very easy to use palette. Most of their choices of the four colors I think were good choices. I think they went well together, and I think you can absolutely do a quick and easy look with them, albeit most of the time I would still add a liner. And just for me, the only one that didn't work as the highlight was this one here in the center. Of course, my memory card is getting full, and I have about three minutes left to talk. So overall, as I said, I'm extremely happy that I purchased this for the $35 at Sephora. I think it's a great palette for everyday looks. I will see me reaching for this regularly, even though it is bulky. I'm going to keep it right up front on my little thing that I have because when I want something that's pretty on my eyes and very easy to do, this definitely says it. I don't have to think too hard when I use this palette. So I'm very happy that I got it. And I do definitely think it's worth it. Would I have paid the $50? I don't know, but I'm really glad that I didn't. Everything else that I'm wearing on my face, I will definitely link down below for you. Of course, you know that they are magic links, so I do make a little teeny tiny commission if you purchase them. If you have this palette or you've been thinking about it, let me know your thoughts on it because I'm always curious to hear what your opinions are when I talk about makeup. So my friends, thanks so much again for hanging out with me. You know I love you tremendously, more than I could ever express. And if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you dick it, dickened? <laughs> oh, didn't like it, you can certainly give it a thumbs down. It just lets me know the kind of things that you like about my videos and not. And of course, my friends, if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe if you like me enough. But whatever part of this world you are in on around, I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you have a fabulous week coming up. And I'll see you really soon in my next video. Much love, everybody. Bye.